Producing beautiful descriptive pieces isn't easy. This video will talk you through three descriptive extracts taken from Willa Cather's novel, My Antonia. For each extract, I will give you two specific tips to potentially use in your own writing. Towards the end of the video, you will get an opportunity to write a few paragraphs of your own using some of the six tips provided in the video. The video will end with me sharing my own paragraphs. It's going to be useful. Stay tuned. This is Schofield on Shakespeare. Here's the first passage from the novel. Read it through with me. Presently we saw a curious thing. There were no clouds. The sun was going down in a limpid, gold-washed sky. Just as the lower edge of the red disc rested on the high fields against the horizon, a great black figure suddenly appeared on the face of the sun. We sprang to our feet, straining our eyes toward it. In a moment we realised what it was. On some upland farm, a plough had been left standing in the fields. The sun was sinking just behind it. Magnified across the distance by the horizontal light, it stood out against the sun, was exactly contained within the circle of the disc. The handles, the tongue, the share, black against the molten red. There it was, heroic in size, a picture writing on the sun. Even while we whispered about it, our vision disappeared. The ball dropped and dropped until the red tip went beneath the earth. The fields below us were dark, the sky was growing pale, and that forgotten plough had sunk back to its own littleness somewhere on the prairie. What interests me about these descriptive paragraphs? What do I like? What works? I could talk about the beautiful description of the sky, or the way the writer avoids weak repetition of the word sun. But instead, I want to talk about the distortion of perspective. In the second sentence of the extracts, the writer refers to a great black figure suddenly appearing on the face of the sun. What is this, we wonder? And, of course, initially, we have no idea. The phrase great black figure sounds threatening, and the writer deliberately doesn't tell us what the figure is for two further sentences. Jim, Antonia, and the other girls can't take their eyes off it, and the reader, like them, needs a few moments before finding out. And what is it? A simple plough, which has been magnified as the sun sets for a few seconds due to its position on the horizon. This utterly ordinary agricultural object has become heroic in size, a picture writing on the sun, and in doing so has produced an unexpected split-second moment of beauty, which perhaps could only happen once in a lifetime. At this moment, Antonia, Jim and the other girls just happened to be in the exact position to see a random distant plough which perhaps unintentionally has been left out in the open being perfectly framed within the circle of the sun. The result is a wonderful sense of synergy between the natural world as represented by the sun and human agricultural endeavour as represented by the plough. So, could it be an idea to experiment with withholding information and to play with different perspectives within our own writing? Perhaps take a moment now to jot down these tips with the edited examples. Press pause now if you'd like to do this. This video will resume in five seconds time.
Papa interested me from my first glimpse of him. He was shorter than his older sons, a crumpled little man with run over boot heels, and he carried one shoulder higher than the other. But he moved very quickly, and there was an air of jaunty liveliness about him. He had a strong ruddy colour, thick black hair, a little grizzled, a curly moustache and red lips. His smile showed the strong teeth of which his wife was so proud, and as he saw me his lively quizzical eyes told me that he knew all about me. He looked like a humorous philosopher who had hitched up one shoulder under the burdens of life, and gone on his way having a good time when he could. He advanced to meet me and gave me a, a hard hand, burned red on the back and heavily coated with hair. He wore his Sunday clothes, very thick and hot for the weather, an unstarched white shirt and a blue necktie with big white dots, like a little boy's, tied in a flowing bow. Kuzak began at once to talk about his holiday. From politeness, he spoke in English. So, what about this extract? What works? What interests? Well, for me, it's the wealth of unusual, small, vibrant, descriptive details of the man. But the first signs are not positive. He is crumpled, so somehow creased, shabby, perhaps slightly shrunken looking. And there is a sense that his boots are old and worn. Whilst the way he carries himself physically implies a lifetime of hard labour. Perhaps we would expect his character and demeanour to be downtrodden, tired, defeated, not a jot of it. We learn that the man has genuine energy and glorious vibrancy. His hard outdoor life has left him healthy and full of colour. Note also the random small detail of what the wife is so proud of. In other pieces of writing, we might expect this to be the man's profession, or his six-pack, or his blonde locks. No, here, it's the strong teeth. Note the simile, which once again is not quite what we might expect. Kuzak is a simple man, with a huge family and a farm to run. Yet, he looks like a humorous philosopher. Philosophers are typically thought to be highly educated, sophisticated, academic, deep thinkers, rather than adopted country folk. And so this simile demands that the reader and Jim recognises the depth to this man. He is emphatically not a dim country yokel, but someone who has accepted that life can be difficult, can take a physical toll on the body, yet this hasn't destroyed his capacity for fun and for seizing opportunities for fun where possible. So, within our own descriptive writing, should we aim to include more unexpected contrasts, as well as ensuring that our similes span across more than one clause? Press pause now if you'd like to jot down these tips with the respective examples. I took a long walk north of the town, out into the pastures where the land was so rough that it had never been ploughed up, and the long red grass of early times still grew shaggy over the drawers and hillocks. Out there I felt at home again. Overhead the sky was that indescribable blue of autumn, bright and shadowless, hard as enamel. To the south I could see the dun-shaded river bluffs that used to look so big to me, and all about stretched drying cornfields of the pale gold colour I remembered so well. Russian thistles were blowing across the uplands and piling against the wire fences like barricades. Along the cattle paths, the plumes of goldenrod were already fading into sun-warmed velvet, grey with gold threads in it. I'd escaped from the curious depression that hangs over little towns, and my mind was full of pleasant things. Trips I meant to take with the Kuzak boys, in the badlands and up on this stinking water. There are enough Kuzaks to play with for a long while yet. 
Even after the boys grew up, there would always be Kuzak himself. I meant to tramp along a few miles of lighted streets with Kuzak. This is towards the very end of the novel, and Jim has clearly gained spiritually from his reunion with Antonia and meeting her huge family for the first time. What do I like about this passage? Well, it is the extent of the descriptive detail, the colours. And I also love the specific references to different types of plants and agricultural features. So, why not try using a wide variety of colours in your own descriptive pieces? Why not also use specific horticultural agricultural terminology to help the reader really picture the scene that you are describing? Press pause now if you'd like to jot down these tips with their respective examples. Time for you to have a go at weaving some or all of these tips within a few descriptive paragraphs. Your task will be to describe a rural scene. How many of the tips discussed in this video will you incorporate and to what extent will they result in a more successful piece of writing? Here are the six tips inspired by Willa Cather's novel. Choose which ones you would like to use, grab your pen and press pause now. Here's my paragraph. Motionless in the warm breeze, her large brown eyes gaze into the distance across acres of heathlands interspersed with flashes of honeysuckle and cotton grass. A few hundred metres behind her lies a large grove. Yew trees cast shadows, but the occasional ray of sunlight spotlights life within a brook. A munching black water vole, perhaps, an olive coloured common toad or even a darting grey-brown lizard for the particularly observance. The horse suddenly bristles, the unwelcome approach of humankind. Gleaming glossy Ariat boots stride forward, whilst higher up necks crane down to peer at mobile telephone screens. The natural world cannot compete. Whilst one human likes Samantha Hubbard's revelation, you don't have to be crazy to be my friend, I'll train you. The horse's eyes continue to gaze across the horizon. I didn't find writing this easy. Although I do love walking and cycling within rural landscapes, I'm not naturally observant. Recently I went on a cycling trip through some of the new forest in Hampshire, England. It was beautiful and included this amusing moment when a horse blocked some of the road in Brockenhurst. Naughty horses. And this horse is just chilling straight in the middle of the road and it doesn't look as though it wants to move. However, I realised that I didn't know many of the names of the plants or animals within the new forest and so did some research on the internet. I also researched parts of the body of a horse. This helped me to be far more specific and precise within my descriptive writing. In other words, I wasn't just going to write, it was so beautiful. What makes this piece of writing effective? What tips did I try to experiment with in the end? Well, there is the withholding of information for effect. It is only in the second paragraph that we learn that she is a horse. There is also the use of a wide variety of colors, brown, black, olive, and gray brown. Although note that these are all very much natural colors that you would expect to see in a rural setting. Using specific horticultural agricultural terminology was new for me, born and bred in the city I'm afraid, but I rather enjoyed researching and finding out about terms such as heathlands, 
honeysuckle, cotton grass, and a more specific type of tree, the ancient yew tree. I also use contrast within my final sentence. A contrast is between the human's mind-numbing use of social media and the serenity of the horse and the wider natural world, which the former is unable to fully appreciate. Continue to take opportunities to get ideas from other writers through your own reading. This has been a Schofield on Shakespeare production aimed at helping you improve your own descriptive writing. Many thanks for watching.